wants us right now. That's why it's infinitely important that we continue to grow in the grace and the knowledge of God. So faith, we've got to believe that God has it, but he wants to give. And then second, capacity. We can't let our heart become hardened and fixed and small, but we've got to grow. And then third is what we'll call interest. Now, this is, you've got to follow me here. But it's virtually impossible to receive anything from God in which we have no interest. And it's pretty impossible for us to receive anything from God about which we have very little interest. What do I mean by that? Well, sometimes we're interested in something on Sunday and we forget about it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And the reality is, as we go through our day and our week and our life, God may be trying to do something and we're not interested because we're so distracted. Now, what Tozer says here, a man of ordinary mind, and you know this to be true, a man of ordinary mind may go on to do marvels in a given field if he has enough interest in it. Really interested in something can go on to do great things, but there are other people with, a, with much more talent and ability, and they're not interested, so they never get there. In other words, I wonder how many um, potential master musicians never became master musicians because they wanted to, um, when they were in their teens, play a pickup game of basketball instead of practice the piano, right? And I wonder how many of us in spiritual things, our minds are just not crying out to God. We're not thinking about spiritual things. One of the things that I'm so hungry for right now, if I'm, I'm just be honest with you, is to, to, to be able to discern the voice of God more clearly in my life. This has been a prayer for the last year. I'm praying over and over again. God, help me to hear the still, small voice. Help me to understand your language. And when you speak to me, help me to have a, you know, the Bible says, an ear that is inclined to God. And, and honestly, just this morning, just this morning, it was beautiful. It was actually really beautiful. I was, I was kind of in a hurry to get here, and I was leaving the hotel room. I to be honest with you, I thought it was going to be a five to ten minute drive, and it was a little further than that. So I, I was a little bit in a hurry, and I was kind of busting it out down the hall, and the Lord kind of dealt with me about how dirty the hotel room was. And I stopped, and I went back, and I, and I left a tip for the maid, because I, I saw the maid's, um, when, I, when I busted out, I saw the maid's um, cart, you know, how they're cleaning down the hall, and, and it was the voice of the Lord. Isn't that great? Isn't that cool? And I was rejoicing because that's it. I'm, I'm learning to hear your voice, Father, and that's, and that's beautiful. So the thing I'm saying is that you've got to have an interest in that thing that you're asking for. If, if you just ask God for some spiritual blessing, and some of you probably this morning, this is the other thing the Lord, I think, put on my heart for us, is that there's some of you, what you, what you would long for as a Christmas gift from God is peace in your heart, more peace, less stress, less anxiety. You can't just say that on Sunday and then forget about it. You have to have your eyes open. You have to have your ears open. You have to be interested in that. We have to have our eyes not on the shiny things that this world is. All, you know, I, I mentioned the Jeep Gladiator earlier, and now I'm convicted. But not on that stuff, but on the throne, on the throne of God, on, you know, on the storeroom of the heavenly treasures. In Ephesians, right, chapter 1, verse 3, praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with, underline in your Bible, every spiritual blessing in Christ. That's who he is. He has blessed us with some, no, he said, every spiritual blessing in Christ. Well, I don't know if you're seeing it because, you know, you have masks on, so I can't tell, but I think you are. He's good. He's so good. That's who he is. All right, so you have to have faith. Not just that he has it, but that he's generous. You have to have capacity. We want to say, God, stretch and grow our hearts. And you have to have interest. We have to be paying attention and not thinking about all the worldly things around us, but thinking about him. And then we get pretty real here. We've got two more real quick. The fourth one is responsibility. Responsibility. The gifts of God are given to us to use, not to hoard. You have not because you ask not, James said, and when you do ask, you ask with the wrong motives in order to spend what you get on yourself. That's what the book of James says. 
I'm thinking about Psalm 67, verse 1. It, may God be gracious to us and bless us. May he make his face to shine upon us. And then here's this cool little, so that, so that. May God be gracious to us and bless us. May he make his face, his countenance to shine upon us so that his ways may be known on earth, his salvation to the nations. Isn't that great? Here's the thing. There's always a so that. When God gives, there's always a reason that is beyond me. So here's the way I say it. Whatever God does in me, he wants to do through me. In other words, I'm never an end for the blessings, but a channel for the blessings to flow through. That's responsibility. When God does that sort of thing, when his face shines upon us, it's so that his ways may be known in the earth. In other words, so that other people see us and see the blessings, the favor, the countenance of God that makes our face shine, the spiritual blessings in Christ. They see that and they know there is a God in heaven. And this is what it looks like when somebody walks with the living God. So that your ways may be known on earth and your salvation to the, to the nations. There's always a reason. So responsibility, if we don't have that responsibility, then we're back to what James said. Selfish attitudes with the blessings of God limit the flow of those blessings into our life. The manifestations of the Spirit are given for the common good. All right, one more, and then we'll work towards concluding. So we have talked about faith. We've talked about capacity. We've talked about interest. We've talked about responsibility. And then the final one, you probably already know what it is. It's pretty simple. We just celebrated it a week and a half ago, and that's gratitude. That's gratitude. It's probably impossible to be too thankful to God, but it might be good for us to try, amen? Our wise father does not often give a second gift until we thank him for the first gift. Just in, in prayer this morning, you, some of you are familiar with the song, the recent song, The Goodness of God. It's, it's a couple of years old now, I suppose, but um, Jen Johnson, I believe, is the one who sings it, The Goodness of God. And I, I just listened to this song uh, three or four times this morning, just as I was praying and preparing for this, that we just need to be thankful people. And there's a study you can do in Romans chapter 1 that really ingratitude is really often the first step away from God. When we forget to say thank you, 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 you can imagine what that is. If you've ever given a lavish gift, if you've ever just been really liberal and, and sacrificial and you've given a, a lavish gift to someone and, and they were flippant with it or they were not grateful or, or they forgot to express gratitude, well, it's hard when the next birthday rolls around or the next Christmas rolls around to want to be generous again. And with, with God, it's, it's, it's not just that he's offended by that, but he sees the hardening of our heart that comes with ingratitude and he just will not continue to pour those blessings out. So remember what we're talking about here is that the Queen of Sheba received what she asked for, what she knew to ask for, but she received so much more than that because she received according to the king's liberality, his goodness. He opened up the very storehouses of heaven. And what, I, what I'm praying for us today, what I'm praying for us is that God, some, some of us, have, we have things in our heart, and I'm praying that God would answer those prayers, that God would meet us where we're at, and he would, he would answer these prayers. Some of you are hanging on to promises that have been preached over the last month or two, and there were specific promises that really gripped your heart. And I'm praying that God will answer that prayer of your heart, that desire of your heart. But I'm also praying that before you turn around and walk away, that our Father in heaven will say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's some things that you didn't know to ask for. There's some things that you weren't quite sure to ask for. Before you go, hang on. And he'll turn around and just throw open the floodgates of heaven so that the divine blessings, spiritual blessings, of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and self-control, those, those kinds of things, not to mention the material things that he knows that we have need of. All those things would just flow into our lives 
but never stay into our lives in a limited vessel, but begin to spill out of our lives into our community, into our neighborhood, into our families, so that his ways will be made known on earth and his salvation to the ends of the earth. Finally, I, maybe I'll ask you to stand with me. And um, I think we have time to, to take just one more quick scripture here. This, this had just um, leapt out at me recently when I was reading the book of Mark. And uh, I won't necessarily take you there, but I'll just remind you. In Mark chapter 6 is when Jesus has been up on a mountainside praying and he has sent his disciples in a boat um, to go to the other side. And he has told them, I'll meet you on the other side. And, and they're rowing all night. And you, you, I think you remember the story. And he, he comes to them late in the night, walking on the water, and they, they think he's a ghost. And after, you know, he, he, Peter has his incident of stepping on the water and that beautiful stuff came. Thank you, worship team, for joining me. Um, the, the accountant Mark says, says this in verse 51. Then Jesus climbed into the boat with them, and the wind died down. Now watch this phrase. This is important. They were completely amazed. Now, be honest. If you'd been rowing all night, uh, you know, uh, against the wind and the waves, and, and some, somebody, some ghost-like specter came walking on the water, and then you realized it was your best friend, it was Jesus, and he got in the boat, would you be amazed? I think we'd be amazed. And so they were completely amazed, but then this word, for... They had not understood about the loaves. Their hearts were hard. Now, this goes back to the feeding of the 5,000. I don't have time to take us through all of that, but the point is they saw something that was supernatural, that was miraculous, that blew their minds, and when they saw that, they were amazed. And it basically says because their hearts were hard. Now, have you ever chewed on that? It's almost like they're kind of being rebuked for being amazed at the supernatural. And I'm, I'm trying to understand this and think, why? Well, I would have been amazed. Anybody would have been amazed. Why were they amazed? Because their hearts were hard. And one commentator said it this way. The reason they were rebuked is because what they lacked was that clear understanding of the heart which expects... Jesus to act as the Son of God in all things and is delighted to see him act as such and is no longer amazed. What am I trying to say? They were shocked when Jesus did the miraculous. And what's funny is later, if you remember, uh, when Peter and John had healed the man at the gate beautiful in Acts chapter 3, and, and all the men of Israel had gathered around, and everybody was you know, mind-blown about this miracle, Peter stands up, and he plays it cool, because remember, he was the one that had a hard heart and was amazed. But here, later, years later, he says, Men of Israel, why does this surprise you? As though by our own power we have done this thing. This is done in, in the name of Jesus. But let's be honest. If Jesus shows up this week in your life and my life and does the amazing, the unexpected, the supernatural, answers those prayers you've been praying for the last months or years, perhaps, we'd be amazed. But here's what I'm telling you. Don't be surprised if sometime soon, maybe right now as we pray, or maybe tomorrow, don't be shocked if Jesus shows up and acts like God because that's who he is and that's what he does. So Lord Jesus, we ask you to remove anything inside of us that would hinder your great power and your great love from flowing into our lives and then out of our lives to our community. Lord, we ask you to increase our faith Lord Jesus, it's easy for us to believe that you're able. It's easy for us to believe that. Would you help us to know that you're willing? Would you help us to have confidence, not just in your, 
richness, but to have confidence in your love, your kindness, your liberality, your generosity, the richness of your grace, the richness of your mercy. Lord, would you help us to have that kind of faith which isn't surprised anymore when you do the things you said you were going to do, when the promises you made come to pass. Help us have the kind of faith that celebrates that. Lord, we ask you, we recognize that our hearts are limited, that our souls are not large enough yet to handle everything that you want to do in us and through us. So would you stretch our hearts? Would you stretch our spiritual capacity? Lord, we ask you to grab our interest again, Lord. Forgive us when the shiny things of this world are more attractive to us than the spiritual blessings that are already ours in the storehouses of heaven. Would you command our attention again, not just today, but throughout the week. Help us to have a mind in love with you, God, and to think deeply on these things. Lord, would you help us to be people who are responsible? We don't want to hoard anything that you do, but we want to be a channel of your blessings so that, so that others would know you. Jesus, help us Finally, to be grateful. God, forgive us when we lack gratitude or when we take your blessings for granted. Even now, we say thank you for the greatest gift that was ever given. Thank you, Jesus, that you came for us. The incarnation that you came for us when we couldn't save ourselves, when we couldn't go to you. You came for us. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. With all of our hearts, we're grateful for Christmas and what it means. Make us grateful people grateful people. And finally, Father, I pray over those perhaps here today or watching online who need a special dose of the peace of God that surpasses understanding. That's part of Christmas, peace and goodwill to men on whom God's favor rests. We pray for the erasing of anxiety from the lives of your children, this promise that some of us are asking for, peace that surpasses understanding. Let it guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Lord, meet your people. Meet your people. Be God. Do what you do among us. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. God bless you, church. The worship team's going to take us.